What do all of these songs have in common? So close, no matter how far Couldn't be much more from the heart If he ever hurts you True love won't desert you songs what do they all have in common well of course like the last two videos I've made this is the third in the series of talking about the most prevalent chord progressions in rock and roll in music in general and this one is no different this one is for lack of a better term the six five four chord progression It's a well-worn path. Sometimes they put a little uh, dominant at the end there, but it's the same chord progression. So what is this chord progression? It is one minor chord, and then a tone down, we have a major chord, and then a tone down, we have another major chord. So it's major, major, minor. What key is this in? Is it A minor? If we're playing in A minor, it is a minor. This is very much like the one, four, five, one that I did last week. When we changed that around, it actually became a five, four, one chord progression and it was in the Mixolydian mode. Well, here again, we have another modal situation. This is in the Aeolian mode. So if this is A minor, and when we say A minor, we mean A Aeolian, because if it was a different kind of minor, if it was Dorian or if it was Phrygian, it would not be the A minor. We would call it A Dorian, and that would be a different key signature. So how do we know what, aside from our, our pentatonic blues box, what could we play over this? Well, in this case, when you have two major chords in a row, one tone apart, and then a tone up from that, you have an A minor, you have a minor chord, so you have a, a major chord, a tone up, you have another major, then you have a minor chord. Anytime you have this, whether it's here, or whether it's here, or here, wherever it is on the neck, it always is the same three chords, just in a different key. And what this is, is it's easy to tell what key you're in, what what scale you would use to play over it. Uh, let's, let's assume that we're not talking about our minor pentatonic blues box in this case. Let's say that we wanna get a little more sophisticated. Well, what would be the actual key of the song? It would be A minor. Now, what is the key signature for A minor? Key signature meaning what is the scale that we would play over that, the sharps and the flats and all that? Well, it's really easy because when, as I said, you have these three chords that are each one tone apart, so we, we're starting either 
either will we start here and we go down, that's one tone down and one tone down, or if we start here and go up one tone or up one tone, it's still three chords, one tone apart each. When we have this from the minor chord down to the major chords, if we start at the minor chord and then we count up three frets, one, two, three, well, right there from A minor, A sharp to B, B to C. So the scale that we would play over this would be exactly the same as this. See how it it, it has a similarity to the one four five chord progression. And really, the minor chord is just, it's a substitute for the one chord. This is, we're getting into, we're getting into a little bit of functional harmony, but how all the scale degrees work. I made a video on diatonic chords and major scales. I will put that in the description below. I, I highly suggest that you check this out. It will give you a really good idea of what I'm talking about here because scale degrees are really important. If we have determined by this little trick that we have. Oh, and by the way, folks, if you haven't already, could you please subscribe and hit the notifications button so we can stay in contact? And please, please, please leave something in the comments. Let me know what you think of, this, of the stuff that we're putting out and what would you like us to put out next? Tell me what you need to know to get you farther along on your musical journey. It would be my pleasure to help you out with that. So getting back to this. Using the little trick of from the minor chord, when you have two major chords in a row, and then you have the minor chord. No, no, no matter where this happens on the neck, whether it's like, or here, or anywhere else, no matter where that system happens, take the minor chord, go up three frets, and that note is the major scale that you can play over it. But we're playing this major scale from the sixth to the sixth degree. C, major. One, two, three, four, five, six. C scale, one, two, three, four, five, six, which is, guess what? A minor. Or, so when you're doing the It's a great jamming piece. It's also uh, in. Uh, it's also the Trooper by Iron Maiden. And it's also the ending of um, Running Down a Dream, a Tom Petty. <laughs> It's a great chord progression, a solo over. You can you can use your minor pentatonic blues box, or you can get a little more sophisticated. And use your Aeolian on that. There are so many ways 
that you can have fun with this. And it is one of those, it's one of those chord progressions that is complete in itself. And we just love to loop these things over. We could listen to this over and over. Basically, all along the Watchtower, I mean, Jimi Hendrix made a made a, a six and a half minute opus out of this. I believe it was in C sharp, but. So if you're in C sharp, B and A, while you're here in C sharp, what key would you be playing over? Well, you, you could easily play your your C minor pentatonic blues box, but what if you want a little bit more uh, finesse? Uh, well, then you count up from C sharp, three frets, and you have E. which is also C sharp minor. that have been written in this chord progression that you can never go wrong. If you know, go back three weeks to the one, five, six, four, the four magic chords. This one is like mind-blowingly important in our development as musicians to know how it works. And also to know these are all diatonic chord progressions. This is what's really important about them too. They are diatonic, meaning that they all exist in the same key, which means that soloing, improvising, and accompanying ourselves over them, it would behoove us <laughs> to learn the scales that go along with these chords. And it's really important that we understand the scale degrees of the chords that we're using and what key signature, I keep saying key signature, and what do I mean by key signature? I don't mean the key that the song is in because if we're playing something with the A minor G F, the key signature of this is the key signature of C major, which has no sharps and no flats. If it were written on a staff of music, there would be no sharps and no flats but we're playing that from A to A. So the tonal center is A, A minor. It's the tonal center. The key signature for this is, but it's played from exactly the same scale. This is what I'm trying to get to with all of these three in the series. If you haven't watched the other two, uh, I highly suggest that you watch the other two and also supplement that with my video on diatonic chords and major scales. These four videos together will really help you to start to understand what's happening in music theory, especially in a contemporary setting like the music that we're playing right here. Double D's Rock School, we are focusing on rock, of course, blues which is where a lot of rock comes from too and I just I, I love playing blues as well so it's it's also important that we that we know this stuff this is the third of three chord progressions that I believe are absolutely essential that we need to know as rock players I would say 85% of our bass is covered if we understand what's happening here with these three chord progressions the one five six four the one four five the five four one <laughs> and of course this one, the six, five, four, or just the, it's a good old fashioned A minor progression. Three chords, it's all we need. We have our home bass, we have our step down the road, we have our drama, and then we come back home. And we can just keep cycling through this forever, 
and just keep adding whatever words we want over top. The best songwriters in history have shown us how powerful these chord progressions are and, and it would be to our advantage to know them as well as we can. So here we are, folks. This is my third in, in, a, in, in the installment of the most ubiquitous chords in rock history. So please, please check out the other two if you haven't already and check out my diatonic chords and major scales video. And this will give you a really solid foundation into understanding music and how you can apply it to your instrument. It's always a pleasure and an honor to spend this time with you folks. My name is Dwayne Dixon, a.k.a. Double D, and this has been this episode of Double D's Rock School. And I think we need some... Somebody give me some cowbell. Oh, I said I wasn't going to do that, and I did it. Eh? I do it there. I went there. All right, take care, people. See you soon. <laughs>